when I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, hallelujah, I will pass, I will pass over you. Good Wednesday, friends. May the Lord bless you real good as we come together in the house of the Lord. May the great Holy Spirit apply the word of God to our hearts and lives and to our understanding that we may grow in grace as we mature in Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you as we read from Exodus chapter 12, reading verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Praise be to God. My friends, it's roundup time. It's going home time. Now, you know, in the Old West or in the Pampas of Brazil, uh, uh, or any of those uh, great South American nations, there's a time when all the ranchers, all the cattle ranchers, move their herds to one place for ship shipping uh, to government locations and places where there is the need and market for beef. And therefore, the government will send their, their, their inspectors and rangers to uh, inspect the cattle that have been rounded up. Now, of course, because the cattle are owned by many, many ranchers, they will all have differ differing brands various brands, uh, just as in like the churches of today, and like the hour and time that we are in. The great governor above is now gathering in. And so all the churches, all the people that name the name of Christ and claim him as their Lord and Savior, are gathering their people in, each one carrying their church brand or the name of their various churches upon them. But even though they have the brands, the uh, government inspectors, the angels, the, the, the men anointed of God, by the great Holy Spirit are not there on the scene to check the brands so much of those cows or of the animals or if you want to say the angels checking the individual believer not as to their membership. God is not interested in what church you're a member of, or, or I belong to this, or I'm a Baptist, or I'm a Methodist, or I'm a uh, Anglican, or I'm Presbyterian, Congregational, Jehovah Witness, whatever name you would like to stamp brand on yourself, your forehead, your neck, whatever, that is your concern between you and your maker. But what they are checking for, not your church name, not your brand name, but God sifting out the wheat from the tears, separating 
the chaff from the grain, separating the genuine from the make-believe. He sends them to check out those animals with the blood test. And I want to say today, naturally speaking, all of us, we need a blood test. And more importantly, we need a spiritual blood test. Because unknowingly, uh, we may look well, we may act well or behave uh, well. Uh, a person may even behave like a Christian. And that could be evil in disguise. So you must have the blood test. You must be tested by the Spirit of God as to the condition of your blood. Because you may be having bad blood. Uh, you may be having mad blood. You may be, oh Lord, have mercy. God help me. I tell you, friends, you may be having some kind of mixed up blood flowing within your veins. And it'll take a real doctor of the scriptures like Dr. Simon Peter, Acts chapter 2, 3. And four, you'll find Dr. Simon Peter there checking the people and finally coming to the conclusion that they have some bad traditional blood in them and they need to uh, cleanse their blood and the only cleansing they can have is by the cleansing of the blood of Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus Christ. Repent and be baptized. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God help us today. As we look into the word of God. And see. We need to have God's blood test. For it's he is the one. The great governor. The government of heaven. The government of the kingdom. Testing his children, trying them, proving them, so that he uh, or they will know who they really are, who their real father is, where they come from, and where they are going. So, we are not here to look at brands. Uh, we are not here to look at church names. We are looking for the blood. For the scripture says, When I see the blood, I will pass over you. But I believe in our modern age, lots of people are making the mistake, uh, are misreading, misunderstanding the scripture. For it does not say, When I see your brand. When I see your church name, uh, I will pass over you. No, God is not interested in that. He is only interested in the blood. And he wants to test us to see what blood we have in us. As I before said, you may have bad blood. You may have mad blood. Uh, you may, uh, God is not interested in your race. God is not interested in your religion. God is not interested in your affiliations. God is not interested in your educational level. God is not interested in your financial matter for nothing matters to him except that you need that blood test your blood must be tested and if you delay you don't want to get it tested then you may find that you uh, you suddenly grow sick or you're suddenly ill. Or you could even die. 
Just yesterday afternoon, I was speaking with an individual who was letting me know how that their mom, who is up in years now, went to the eye doctor for uh, an eye test. And in testing the eye, the doctor said, from the way the blood is moving in your eye, you have a problem with the blood flow in your heart. And you'd better rush now and have yourself tested. For you can, you, you're now open to getting a sudden stroke. Or you can die. So this is an emergency. You need to have a blood test. And thank God that dear woman went to have her blood test. And uh, when she was tested, the doctor says, no, you cannot even go home. You have to stay right now. They took her in, operated. She had a problem with her heart. And if she had delayed, her heart would blockage would have gone on and she would have expired and gone to the great beyond. However, as of today, the woman is fine and she is strong. She is in a state of recovery and rejoicing because her life was saved. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God, my friends. Uh, I may not be a natural eye doctor, but the Holy Spirit allows me to see things in the Word. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, I want to advise you that you should have this blood test. Have your blood tested, your cholesterol, your different levels. Have it tested. See what kind of a blood. You may need some bitter experiences come into your life to cleanse your blood, to purge your blood. And to make it the way God, allow it to be the way God wants it to be. Oh, praise his marvelous, wonderful name. Amen. Hallelujah. God looking down says the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Because that soul is separated from him. And it cannot approach him whatsoever. For all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Amen. But thank God, as we look into the Old Testament, when the entire human race was caught in the trialdom of sin, God took, tell the priest, took, take an animal and took its life, and there the life of the animal was taken instead or in substitute for the life of the sinner. And so without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And so that sinner would have to bring a lamb up to the temple and the high priest would let the sinner lay his hand on the head of that lamb. And there the high priest would then cut the throat of the lamb. The blood will be spraying and sprinkling everywhere. Blood will be on the, on the person that brought the lamb as their substitute. Amen. And so the sinner would feel the bleeding and the bleed, hear the bleeding of that lamb. He will feel the body, quivering body of that lamb before him as it stiffened 
uh, in death before him. And then it will be placed on the fire. He will see the smoke of the sacrifice ascending up to heaven unto God. And then, my friends, with joy in his heart, he knew the lamb had died in his stead. He knew the lamb had taken his place. He knew that that innocent lamb that did nothing had forfeited his life instead of the sinner forfeiting his own life. But, and he knew that the lamb had forfeited his life so that the innocent life of that dying lamb could come back and rest upon that person that was a sinner as a covering to hide their sins from the holy eyes of God. And so the blood of an animal not being equal or the life of animal not being equal to the life of a human could only cover sin but it could not take away sin. Therefore, back in the Old Testament, we find that they would go out with the same desire with which they came in. Though they were protected, though they were covered, they will go out with the same desire to commit sin as when they came in and thus you will find in the Old Testament scripture that they had to come back year after year to make sacrifices and offering for their sin. Oh, my friends, but thank God the scene changes. Glory to his marvelous name. For in this New Testament, we find this dying lamb, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, hallelujah. The Bible says he gave his life as a ransom, not for one sinner, but a ransom for all, for many. And by faith, we walk up to him. And we lay our hands upon the head of our dying lamb. As in the words of the song, Dear dying lamb, thy precious blood has never lost its power. And there may I, oh praise God, we lay our hands upon our dying lamb. And that dying lamb being Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We believe that by Holding on to him by faith. Amen. Amen. And seeing his bloody wounds. Seeing the blood flowing from his head, his hands, and his feet. His lacerated back with the Roman whips upon him. We feel the pain. We hear him cry. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Amen. My God, my God. God, why hast thou forsaken me? And what happened? The Bible said he gave up the ghost. He gave up the ghost. Hallelujah. What ghost? The Holy Ghost was in him. And he gave up the ghost. And so the life that was in him, or the Holy Ghost was in him, was now released. The life that was in him was now free. It was once in one man named Jesus Christ, our representative. But when our dear dying lamb laid his head down and gave up the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is now made available. It's in the atmosphere, in the world today, available for everyone that will sincerely uh, be 
believe that with all their heart that the reality of the power of the Holy Spirit and the presence of the Holy Spirit to fill you, to anoint you, to take your life and make it over again and to express himself through you and use you for the glory of his marvelous name. Thank God, the Holy Spirit, who is the life that was in the blood, has now come back and is here to come upon every one of us repentant sinners. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah, the life of him came back upon us. You see, as I've said, God has to give us the blood test. Amen. Because you need a blood test for the purposes of your natural health and of your spiritual health. You need a blood test to show what is your origin. Who really is your father? We're living in a day, in the hour, when the Bible says the hour will come when they're going to take women. They're not just going to marry women. They're just going to take them, live with them, making a whole lot of children, but not taking responsibility for them. Instead of marrying them and protecting them and preserving them and watching over them. But no, the Bible says they're going to marry and give in. Uh, they're going to just take women uh, and carry on like that. And so the children are born. And, and one woman may have children from so many different fathers that they, uh, they don't know which one is their father. Uh, so many people join so many churches going to this church, that church. Uh, they're a Baptist, they're a Methodist, they're this, they're that. After a while, their head is spinning, they're denominational mental chaos and don't know where they come from, don't know where they are going. Uh, they're more interested, are, am I going to be buried in the, uh, in the Catholic burial ground? Am I going to be buried in the Anglican burial ground? Am I going to be buried uh, in the Methodist burial ground? That's not important to the real child of God. Because my friends, when you get the real blood test, It'll tell you that your father is not Mr. Baptist, Mr. Methodist, Mr. Catholic, Mr. Anglican, Mr. whatever he calls his name, but your father is Jehovah, Jesus, God in heaven. And you look up to him, oh my father, I repent, I'm coming home, Lord. I rest my needy soul in thee. Oh, I give thee back the life I owe, that in thy crimson flow it might be richer and fuller be. Oh, praise God forevermore. Yes, brother and sister, that is why we come to him by, for this wonderful blood test, amen, so that we might know who our Father is. Many times, people have a genealogy test, and when their blood is checked, they say, oh, that person whom you think is your father is not really your father. Uh, this blood test shows that this person over here is your father. Oh, my friend, we got to have the real blood test. I'm talking in the natural, but I'm trying to point you to the fact that we don't go by church names, affiliations, who brought you up, how many years you spent in this church. I was too, uh, you know, my entire life and childhood was in this certain, that has nothing to do with it. When God checks you, you'll find out Oh, Lord, my father, my mother is not this one, that one, or the other one. But I recognize, Lord Jesus, you are my real spiritual father. I'm coming home to you, Lord. I turn away from my past. I turn away from the mistakes uh, that I have done, Lord. I walk away from it all. 
Let the dead pass, bury its dead, God with heart within and God overhead, forgetting the things which are behind. I now press to the mark which is in Christ Jesus, my Lord and my Savior, to whom I commit my life now, seriously, sincerely, re oh God, reverently, I repent. Repent. I ask for your forgiveness and I ask for the cleansing of the blood of Jesus Christ to flow through my veins. Oh, the blood from Emmanuel's veins. May the blood from his body flow through my body and may the blood from him that cleanse me let it cleanse me now and purge me of all the things that were in my life and make me a true, uh, uh, a new creature, a new person in Jesus Christ to have a new beginning, a new walk, and oh God, a new fatherhood with my father, and his family. Praise God, hallelujah, forevermore. All glory to his <clears throat> marvelous <clears throat> and wonderful name. Amen. Praise God. With the cleansing of this blood, all the bad blood, all the mad blood, all the evil wants to pass out from you. <clears throat> and you go back without this desire to go around, sitting around. And now you possess a hatred for the works of the flesh and the lusting of the flesh and desires of the world. <clears throat> You're still in a flesh body and the devil will tempt you, but you have no desire to respond to his evil test, trials, temptations, tribulations, whatever he may bring your way, you trust that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all sins and make you a child of God. What is our life? It's like a vapor and like a smoke. What is your natural life? Where did it come from? Your natural life was passed down by your daddy, your father. For the life is in the blood. And the blood comes from the male. The female provides the egg. And together with that uniting time, the blood cell and the egg produces the child who comes forth. And that is why the blood from the male, egg from the female, praise God. That is why the woman takes on the man's name and the children that are born for him by her take on not the woman's name, but the man's name. Hallelujah. He has a place that he put his name and he put it on his children. He put it on his wife. It's like a claim. I claim this woman as my own. I claim these children as my own. I am now responsible for her. I am now responsible for them. I now protect her. Uh, I now protect these children. I now provide for her. I now provide for these children. For I am their father. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Oh, friends, that is what happened at redemption. Remember, the Bible tells us that the Holy Ghost came upon Mary overshadowed her and she bore a son and they called his name that's the earthly name of God is Jesus Christ amen 
Let me repeat. God's earthly name is Jesus Christ. All the others before were only titles. Father is a title. Son is a title. Holy Ghost is a title. Jehovah a title. These were all titles. But now this name is Jesus. Just like you and I were born. And then you, when you were born, you were given a name here on the earth that they call you by. And so God being the eternal spirit, Elohim, when he came to the earth in a flesh body, they had to give it a name. And the name it was given was Jehovah, our Savior. And that is what Jesus means. Jehovah has become our Savior. And so we see that the blood cell came to Mary through the spoken word of the angel Gabriel, thou shalt bear a son, and his name shall be called Jesus. And he will be the Savior. He will save your people from their sins. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so, friends, down from his glory to become our Savior, our God and Savior came, and Jesus was his name. And he came from Galilee to Gethsemane, to Golgotha, to become our sacrifice. The Hebrew word will be our goel. He came to be our kinsman redeemer. To take our place. As the old song says, he took my place at Calvary. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And that is what he did. Shed his blood. And gave up the ghost. Now, as you know, when I was in Pentecost, many other people are still caught in those various uh, traps or those various denominational names. I was taught to believe that the blood of Jesus was just the red chemical that we could imagine and believe flowed out of his body. But they forgot one thing. The Bible already told us the life is in the blood. The life is in the blood. So when Jesus died and the blood flowed out, it wasn't so much the red corpuscles of the chemicals, but that life he gave up the ghost went back to heaven, and under their Pentecost, the Bible says, he came back down upon the believers in the form of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost that came out of him came back down, for the life was released from in that blood and came to us. Hallelujah! And that same Spirit of life to dwell within our hearts, within our lives, and to set us free. Amen. And so we don't have to come back year after year. Amen. Like Jesus told Peter, uh, you don't need to be for me to wash you again. Right? It's just your hands and your feet. Uh, that's why you need to have the washing of the saints feet, which is to say your daily walk. You, you can repent of that every night, every day. Ask God to cleanse that part of you. But as far as your soul is concerned, once you're truly genuinely washed, you're washed forever and cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And by one sacrifice, he has set us all free if we are willing to accept the change. And Allow him to turn our lives around 
repent, to turn back, turn around, go in the opposite direction from which you might be living now and let God have his way and have the victory of dominion over sin by receiving the life of Christ in you. And then he reigns as Lord of Lords, having victory over the world of flesh and the devil. God promised by the great prophet Isaiah, I'll give you a sign. And the great sign that I will give you is that a virgin will conceive and bear a son. That will be your sign. Oh, praise God, that will be an everlasting sign. And his, he shall be called Emmanuel, which is meaning what? God with us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And thank God he has come down. Amen. Once more to dwell, not in Jesus back there, but in you and me here today. Praise God. And making you another manifestation of Emmanuel. God walking up and down amongst the people in you and me. The unrecognized presence of the living God living and moving in the life of the true believer walking here upon the earth. Oh, glory to his wonderful name. Amen. Thank God. The blood cell for Mary came to her not by her going with a man. But the blood cell came to her through the spoken word of God. And that brought life. Amen. To fulfill Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. How that you will bruise the serpent's head. Amen. And you, he will bruise his heel. Praise God. And there in the body of Mary. In the church. In the body of Mary was Created a body for God to dwell in. Type of the true believer, of course. Amen. Praise God. And so we know how he was born, how he grew, and how he was He was washed by John the Baptist as a sacrifice. And the Holy Spirit came upon him uh, like a dove. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, this is my beloved son. Hallelujah. In whom I am pleased to dwell in. That's the life that came back upon the sinner. And that is why when that life is in you, he says, because I live, you shall live also. Amen. Thank God, born again, free from sin. I'm happy night and day. Oh, hallelujah. Aren't you happy today? Oh, if you're not fully happy, if you're not certain, then while I'm yet speaking or after I'm finished, may that brother, that minister, that person lead you to Christ where you can repent of all your past, the mistakes that you made. Oh, my. Yes, sir. Oh, the hours that you have wasted are so many. Oh, the hours that you've taken up. Oh, my friends, may God forgive us, cleanse us, wash us, and make us all over again. That he might live in us. That we might not produce an imitation of Christ. But we will produce the reality of the very life of Christ living in us and through us for his glory. For real Christianity is not you trying to be like Jesus. But real Christianity is the real Christ living in you and living out his own life. And you cease from your own works, your own trying, your own striving, uh, and allow him to live through you, Christ in you, your hope of glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How striking it is. The great Jehovah come down, crying over a manure pile. Jehovah, 
born in a manger. Think of it. Born not in only a manger back there or a manure pile back there, but in this stinking heart, mind, and life of ours, rotten with sin, that he would come and lay in the manger of your heart and mine. Amen. To a proud, puffed up intellectual, know it all generation. Oh, my friends, God has come and manifested himself in the lives and hearts of the true believer. Think of it. Baby Jehovah allowed himself to be represented in the form of a baby crying in a manger. The form of his Holy Spirit crying in me and you, crying out the gospel sound of the word of God. And to them it seems foolishness. To those that know not the wisdom of God, it seems rough, crude, uh, and foolish. Not systematic, intellectual, uh, presentational, and all that sort of thing, which that is good. But to hear a voice of God speaking through the heart of the true believer and crying out, Come to me, son. Come to me, child. Come to me, my people. God, the great shepherd, calling out his sheep. And my sheep hear my voice. And a stranger, they will not fall, follow. Oh, praise God, Jehovah, living, dying, rising, and coming again. Amen. That same day on Mount Calvary, the sun set. And darkness filled the land. You can place it. The S-U-N. Set there. Naturally. But the spiritual mind shows you. That it was the S-O-N. Of God. Sun. Set. And spiritual darkness. Covered the land. They tried to put him in a tomb. As they've done. Did with the church. During the dark ages. Of of spiritual Babylonian inquisition. And they tried to hold him there. Three days, three nights. But God brought him out. Luther, Wesley, back to Pentecost. And Pentecost gives what? Resurrection came out of that. Praise God. Hallelujah. He raised up. And brought back a glorified body in which he lived to fulfill his word. Jehovah, come back like a mighty rushing wind, moving by his sp spirit. Amen. Now coming to stay and live within his people, to heal his people, to live in his temple, to raise up his people, to back ties them and fill them with the spirit of, of all kinds of interpretation and anointing and miraculous divine power in the world that would attract the attention of the people that they might know he lives in me he lives in me oh the God of all heaven and earth now lives in me and when they recognize that it's God in you not you but him working in you it brings their attention back to the word of God. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. Not only able to heal sickness. But he can heal the sin sick soul. He can save the sin sick dying soul. Save the prostitute. Save the adulteress and the adulterers. The fornicators. The dirty living people in this world. He can save the intellectual. Oh, the financially so-called successful, but dead in your sins and in your iniquity. Oh, the same God that does that can save the champagne drinking official as well as he can save the drunkard in the street. God can save the cigarette smoking woman or man as well he can save the cigar puffing banker up there, a mighty God, and his love and grace is great and mighty. Oh, praise God, hallelujah, down from his glory, ever-living story, 
my God and Savior came and Jesus was his name. Oh, what condescension bringing us redemption that in the dead of night, not one faint hope in sight, God gracious tender laid aside his splendor, stooping to woo, to win and save my soul. Thank God that he came and shed his precious blood. As I wind up and conclude what I'm saying here tonight, shed his blood to set the captives free, came and redeemed his lost sheep. Some of these things I'm saying here, I wouldn't even bother to expand or com uh, comment on them. Captives free, lost sheep, somebody owned you before you got lost, and he's now calling you back again, giving us eternal life. Eternal life. Life unending, where we cannot perish. For he that liveth and believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he also live. And the Bible tells us, he won't lose not one of them that believes on him. But he will raise them up in the last day. Oh, hallelujah, thank God, we cannot be hurt by the second death. Yes, the first death of natural body, we all grow old and we may physically die physically in the natural body. But that soul, once it's repented, once it's come under the power, the empowerment and the transformation of the blood of Jesus Christ, it cannot die. And the second death has no power over us. And it has no power over us because... We belong to the Lamb. His name is on us. He owns us. He claims us. He is the great victor, the mighty conqueror, the overcomer. And we follow him wherever he goes. And where does he go? He says, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. And what do we know? He's gone into the Past the veil into the heavens where the glory never fails. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. May the Lord watch over us, cleanse us. May the Lord take us with him as we surrender our lives to him. That we might rise up, live for him while we are on earth. That we may be caught up together with him in the air, in the rapture, and live with our Lord forevermore. May God forgive us of our sins, everyone. Cleanse us, wash us, and bring us once more together again on Sunday morning with a new life, with a new hope, a new walk, a new future. Praise God. Thank God we serve a God of a second chance, that he can give us a second chance of life, a second chance to walk with him, live for him, represent him, and to just allow him to live his own life through us, that we can become a living manifestation of the presence of God in these last days. May the Lord richly bless you and watch between us until we come together again. God bless you, my friends. <music>